Well, the Rugby League World Cup kicks off this Saturday with England taking on Australia and Wales playing Italy in a double header at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. New Zealand are seeking to retain the trophy they won in Brisbane five years ago. Our reporter and presenter and former Rugby League international Tolson Tollett discovered there's a lot more about the sport than meets the eye. 2008 was a good year for New Zealand. They lifted the Rugby League World Cup for the first time in their history and they'll be one of the favourites and one of the biggest draws in the tournament this time round. But for folk here in Rochdale, there's only one Southern Hemisphere team on their mind. Now I'll give you a clue. It's not the land of my upbringing, Australia. It's the international minnows, Fiji. But why? Well, outside of London, the town boasts the largest community of Fijians in the world. This all began in 1961 when Rochdale Hornets snapped up internationals Arisi Dewey and Joe Lavula. This opened the door for others like Mike Ratu, for whom it will be extra special when Fiji take on Ireland at Spotland Stadium. It was my dream this, or the dream of the Rochdale people, for Fijian rugby team to come and play Rochdale Hornets. It's like icing on the cake for us. And the town, they're buzzing. And I hope maybe in the 28th, everybody will be Fijians. So there you have it. Rugby League responsible for bringing a touch of the exotic to Rochdale. As will be the case here at Headingley Stadium when New Zealand take on Papua New Guinea in their Group B game. But did you know the sport of Rugby League is responsible for something else? Britain's first black captain in any sport. In the Welsh wing wizard, Clive Sullivan. I think Rugby League's... I'm afraid to try different things and it's almost pioneering for sport. Everyone that played with him always speaks very highly of my, of my father. said he was great to play around, he was a good friend. And obviously he was a, a good leader at the time too. Is rugby league truly a force for change then? Well, during the Second World War in occupied France, the Vichy government certainly thought so. So much so that in 1940 the sport was forbidden to be played. Why? Because they thought it would corrupt the French youth. It caught the imagination of the French public, it was spectacular, it was open, it was ideally suited to the French temperament. The Vichy government was very much against professional sport. They didn't know how players who were so fit and fast could possibly play to this standard if they were not full-time professionals. So in a sense, uh, that, that contributed to, to the game's downfall. As the history books show, rugby league went on to survive and France devised and hosted the inaugural World Cup in 1954. Now, nearly 60 years later, this trophy is again up for grabs, a notion that was taken a little too literally in 1970. Australia won the 1970 World Cup final against Great Britain, and they came back here to the Midland Hotel in Bradford with the cup. At some point during the evening, the trophy disappeared. It was only two decades later, a passerby was walking through Bingley, just north of Bradford, and saw something shining in a ditch. It's one of the great mysteries of British sport where that trophy had been. Who knows what further lessons we'll learn over the coming weeks, but one thing is for sure, on November the 30th, here at Old Trafford, a new chapter of Rugby League history will be written.